Hello, ladies and gents, and welcome to a very fun game. Not false advertising, I swear. Okay, this is going to be one that keeps you glued to your screen however you're watching. We've got 900 ELO, uh, and these days 900 ELO, while you know, technically they qualify for low, my low ELO Legend series, they're very strong. Uh, you have lots of aggression in 900 ELO. You've got even got some quick walls here or there. Players are very good, and it is on Mega Random. <laughs> <laughs> I, I doubt you just heard my cat scream, but that was a loud scream from my cat. He's outside the door, and he's just like, Dad, come play with me. Stop talking about that dumb video game. Anyways, um, I got distracted. I apologize. Now, Mega Random can give uh, many different generations. You never really know what you're going to get. This generation, however, I have seen before, and it is actually on my channel. I'm not going to go through and dig up which video it was if you want to see previous examples. But if you are someone who watches a lot of my videos, you might recognize this. So it's random, but it's something we've seen before. Uh, there's a crossing between the players who are both on their own little island, right? So the only way to access the other would be to go through the middle. And they're not very far away at all. On their island, they've got plenty of stone and gold. They've got berries. They've got water buffaloes. They've got deer. So they've got a fair amount of food. And what there's not of is a lot of fish on this map. So... A tip I always give is if there's water, dock it. Uh, I would hesitate a little bit more on Mega Random because Mega Random in general just doesn't spawn as many fish. But from what they're seeing, it kind of looks like, you know, there could be water endlessly, right? They don't really have an idea that there's actually land to expand to on the sides. Now, I actually played this version of the map as well. A funny story is I uh, was in a long queue. It was like seven and a half minutes. And if you go over seven minutes the ELO range that the system searches from really expands at that point. So at the time, I was like 2,300 ELO. I get in, never seen the guy before, and he goes, why am I up against you? This, this system's bugged. Like, he was really upset with the system that he got up against me. I asked what his ELO was, and he said he was like 1,800 or 1,900. Still really solid, right? So anyways, he complains about the system, and then he beats me. <laughs> that was the last time that I played on this map, and what I had done is I had gone for a lot of water control, and he had snuck to the sides. I would have casted the game if it was a little bit more closer, but honestly, he just... He stopped me pretty good, because he had town centers on the sides. So we'll see if the players notice that, but the reason I bring this up is not just because of the story, but because I wanted to point out that this little connection here doesn't happen every single time. And the one I had played, we had to transport to get to the outer ring. And I remember another cast from Low Elo, where this, you can kind of see it's there, right? This connected on this side as well. So yeah, if they wish to expand, they could see this opening on this side. You could see it from Red's point of view. Red might find out soon. Has scouted very, th very thoroughly, excuse me. Uh, and then Blue has noticed and has even ventured over to that right-hand side. It looks like Red's now noticed as well. Red's going to drop a dock. Very interesting approach here. Red dropping a dock before a lumber camp. Would not suggest that. You're going to need wood to produce fishing ships out of the dock in the first place. So it would be more than worth it to just place the lumber camp ahead of time. Red not really a fan of that. Blue adding the dock. But blue also already has the lumber camp. And Persians do start with plus 50 wood and plus 50 food. So blue doing a little bit of everything here. Both players have kind of built houses along the front of their base to act as some type of a wall. And, uh, I don't know, maybe Red likes straggler trees too much. Oh, there we go. Red's gonna go chop that wood line. So, pretty useless dock. You know, the other thing about docking, too, is you want to be able to take the shorefish. I think there is actually a shorefish on the right side of this dock, but sometimes if you place docks a certain way, you just can't see it. So, I think maybe Blue is like, oh, crap, I placed a bad dock. I can't take the shorefish with my villager and drop off the food of the dock. In reality, Blue can. I think if you look at the minimap, you can see it, right? But anyways, been there. And what is the plan going to be for these two? Again, they are very close to one another. Blue hasn't actually located the enemy. The red hasn't either. So, I mean, I think you could assume that if you're on an island and there's a crossing headed towards the middle, that your opponent is likely on the other side of that. But we'll have to see. For now, Red hasn't researched any eco upgrades in the Dark Age, something that the Burgundians can do. And you could tell Blue's practicing some hotkeys or still learning some hotkeys. We had a mining camp there originally. Blue deletes that. 
And now Blue's going to go for a lumber camp for some more wood. Still no fishing ships for Blue. I think Blue probably got the dock up and realized that there was a shoreline here. And maybe thought better of it. The Blue is going to make a fishing ship now that I say it. But yeah, just keep your eyes peeled on this one, guys. It's going to be really interesting, okay? And while the Dark Age has been a little bit awkward for both of them, both players are in an even spot here. Similar amounts of TC idle time. They've done a good job pr producing villagers. And red is aware that the side exists, and blue is as well. So if they would like to escape, they can do so. But they would have to run through the middle, and this could even be walled up. Imagine a gate here. That'd be super good. Okay, so Ozzy the One shows up, sees the opponent's town center. Red is now on the way to Feudal Age. Ozzy has the food and the buildings to go up to Feudal Age as well, and is going to do the same. And that one fishing ship did find that shore fish, actually. And Blue's going to add more fish. Like, where's my fish, man? And Red finally got a fishing ship out as well. Interesting stuff. We don't have a barracks yet from either player. Just wait it out with me here. The buildup is important. What will the players do? Now, I breezed through parts of this game. So I have a an idea. And I, I think... I don't know. You guys tell me. Maybe you'd prefer that I don't acknowledge if I've seen a game before. I like to just be straightforward with that. Um, and I, it adds additional perspective for me because I like to talk about what I was thinking. So when I breezed through this game, I thought two lumber camps, lots of villagers on wood. You've got fishing ships and you've scouted your opponent has a dock. So considering we've got gold mining, this is going to be fire galleys. That's what I assumed. But then I looked over here and Blue also added a barracks. So I'm like, ooh, could kind of be anything, right? Because... You're adding the barracks, you might want a follow up building in a stable or an archer range. The red, not showing any signs of interest in you know being super aggressive here, going to place some houses all along the front here, just trying to wall this up. So that seems to be the priority for red, but you know, no potential for a military building. Meanwhile, on this side, the wood is there for blue if blue wants to add something. But the most precious, precious resource, excuse me, in Age of Empires 2 is actually time. Uh, I wasn't going to say wood or food or anything like that. Obviously, those things are important, but... Now, you, you work your way up to build up towards a certain goal. And the more you move up through the ranks, the less time you have to accomplish that goal, right? Which then limits your options. So if this was high-level play... Blue would probably already have a military building and already have army here, and then this slow one villager wall wouldn't happen. Well, that's that's kind of what I mean, right? And you know, for blue, I mean, that starting scout could even kill that villager. Red doesn't even have loom yet. It's a pretty basic upgrade to research. But you know, blue also needs the time here, and we had the blacksmith, and now we've got the market. These villagers were gonna leave, and we'll see if. You know what the plan is here for blue exactly but blue's gonna head up towards castle age red does have five fishing ships it's bringing in food slowly it is something and then red is also almost finished with the berries but um blue is gonna reach castle age faster blue's gonna add the stable and again to me it just seems like blue kind of has a better idea of how to play the map tc idle time is actually the exact same for both players but I mean, the fact that, you know, blue at the lumber camp timings down, good eco upgrades, everything's looking pretty good. Would maybe like to see the farming upgrade now and a bunch of farms around the TC. And then you just make knights. Pretty solid fast castle here, man. I mean, this is going to be sub-17 minute fast castle on an open map. Just passing. Again, she is loomless, would die. And blue said, who cares about that? I think red had a bit of a oh crap moment. Oh crap, I needed gold. And the gold came in late. And now, oh crap, I need my buildings. <laughs> the red's fishing ships are fishing right next to the Palisade wall. <laughs> uh, and blue, blue's not making any navy. And blue's like, nope. I wonder if part of the thinking, and it's possible that they don't think about this at all, but I wonder if part of it is you don't want to make navy because you don't want to tell them that you have a dock. Because if you make navy, then they know. And I mean, from Blue's perspective, you can see that Red has two docks. So you might not want to awaken the beast. All right, Blue makes it to Castle Age. Getting Bloodlines out of the stable. 
And Blue now is going to drop a town center right between the two stones. Blue has not tried to send any villagers over here. And Red is, is full walling this. From what I can see, there's no holes here. Blue's not making army from the stable. Blue's putting focus on other things first. And now Red's going to go to stone. So one player has a town center between their stones. The other person is building a mining camp between stones. But the point is, there's going to be some stone. And if you've seen the title and or thumbnail of this video, you understand this game is going to come down to castles. Now, guys, I'm not actually sure if you can build on this terrain. What do you guys think? I think you can build on this little sand line. In fact, I'm certain of it because that's essentially shoreline. But I, I'm I'm going to assume that you can't uh, build a, anything on that. It looks like there was an overchop and Blue is just going to place houses as part of the wall. But yeah, Blue doesn't have a villager lead because Blue hasn't really been creating villagers, but is opting to create knights now. And Red's later cast age time isn't an issue because Blue hasn't forced any fights or tried to take any engagements. Red's still actually adding fishing ships, by the way. There's not enough fish for me to really feel like this makes sense, but if you do make fish traps later on, it could be nice. The fish traps give you a lot of long-term food income, and it doesn't look like Red's making any navy. Let's check resources collected in this game. We're 20 minutes in. Oh, man, it's so close. More food and more wood for red. A lot more gold for blue, and we'll see what the stone count ends up looking like for both. Because as of now, red doesn't have a military building. So I, I don't think red just hoping to chill here all game. I think for red, the military is going to be military out of that castle. Blue happily on the island. It's kind of funny how both players know... That they can leave the island, but they don't want to because of the security of it. Like, a couple of villagers down here making a TC or over here making a TC would be so nice. Because then if you ever get pressured, you can escape. But for the sake of our entertainment here, they're both going to stay on their island. And this is going to get wild. Castle there for Red. I like the castle. You know, it's a good spot. Red decides better of it. Thinks that maybe it's blocking too many farms, so the villagers are going to walk somewhere else. Uh, we'll see a town center there for Red for more villagers. Now it doesn't have the stone for the castle, so these villagers are like, Hey, who used our resources? We're ready to build. They've got to send out an email like, Well, you know, production wouldn't have added the town center. We'd be able to do our jobs. It's a real, It's a real situation right now. Email chains are getting crazy. Everyone's replying to all. Now, that's just my attempt to act like I understand normal office life in 2023. Because I've only been doing this for a job for the last six years. Which I love, by the way. No nasty email chains to co-workers. Alright, town center's up for red. Castle's gonna go up. Also a barracks. What about blue? Well, blue has this stable. And says, I need three more stables. Just... We're prepping for a bigger attack. But also has enough for a castle right now. Also has one demolition raft inside of this dock. <laughs> uh, maybe hoping to use it on the, the shoreline here. Hey, there we go. Okay, so blue has wandered over to the right side. And blue is going to expand with the economy. Meanwhile, red is just like, I need houses everywhere. Th thank you. Really prefers the houses to be in a line and along the shoreline so they get the good ocean views. And what? Red's got 10 Coustier in Q. So remember that thing I talked about with time? Well, Red certainly has had the time here. Blue hasn't pressured at all. And Blue is going to drop the castle there. I really would have liked that, actually, because it blocks the escape from your opponent. But Blue instead is just going to send the villagers over this way. And is still, you know, trying to muster up the courage to move forward with the knights. Now these three stables are going to be in que are queuing up knights. Actually, just two out of the three. I'm not sure what happened there. But red, what's the scouting look like? Okay, red's just scouting the other area. Now the the coustier or the coustelier. This unit, it uh, the first attack is really strong. It's got charge attack, and then it needs to regen. So if you if you're Careful about how you take the fights here. Like, if you fall back to your castles or any defensive positions, it is the superior unit compared to a knight. 
Red just casually getting Loom. Units would have been one or two shotted this whole time without Loom. And Red is running out of resources, guys. This is a pretty big deal. Now, Red, you know, still... Let's see, has Red collected more resources? Yeah, Red has collected more resources. So it's a frustrating situation for Blue because Blue has had all the timings, but Blue hasn't used that time effectively. But it's clearly building up towards something. And here come the units from Red. Meanwhile, Blue has docked the right side. Okay. <laughs> Can Red see it? Red cannot see this. Okay, so Red deletes the wall and is looking to take map control. Blue has made a transport ship. Our transport ship is at least on the way. Here comes Red. Red's like, I've got this. I've got an amazing unit. I'm an amazing player. I've got an amazing name. I've got an amazing Civ. Just everything's amazing for Red right now. What's not so amazing is that there's no hole for the opponent. So now we see Red attacking. And Blue is going to respond here. And Blue's thinking, well, this is what the Knights were for, right? And that's a lot of Knights. It's 15 Knights should end up beating the nine Custia that are here. We got Cavalier as well for Red on the way. Um, and Red trying to escape here. And Red just blocked off. Fortunately for Red, Red is going to be able to escape with a lot of this. But Red should be able to count and realize this isn't good for me. Now, meanwhile, you could only fit five villagers in each transport. And we have five villagers over here. And you know, think about it from Red's perspective. Red's just like, okay, I've got to defend from this. It's so obvious for us, guys. It's so obvious. But for Red, Red's lo to, you know, losing a lot of the units, needs to fall back towards the castle, is very stressed out, is making more knights. And Blue has dropped the castle there. <laughs> Shh. Be quiet, guys. <laughs> also, I think these villagers have been tasked to go finish that castle. I think Blue thinks that they, were, they arrived over on this shoreline. Let's see if I'm wrong. I'm not sure where they're going otherwise. Yup, there they go. They're going to finish the castle. And Red's probably like, man, what an idiot. What an idiot this guy is if he were to see that. Blue obviously notices and runs away. KD's 8-7. to seven. They were pretty close fights because Blue had the numbers. And it's just so bold. The opponent never expected it. Red didn't see it at all. And this is the player who didn't expand to anywhere else on the map, right? Blue's probably staring at this right now like, oh my god, it's perfect. And... All of a sudden, panic time for Franz Ferdinand. And he's probably thinking, what do I do? And what he's going to decide on here is actually kind of smart, and he's going to go for petards. You do need eight petards to connect with a castle for it to go down. But then he's got his units as well. Blue is a beast, though. Blue prepped this university. This university was coming up while the castle was, so he could get murder holes. Without murder holes, these units would eventually take that castle down. And now, you know, like, maybe this answers our question, by the way, of if you can build on this terrain. Red tried to wall up. And Blue's attacking with more knights. And while Red still has more eco, and more collected might even be the case as well. Okay, yeah, still Red has, like, collected more of every resource. Murder Holes is in. And these units from Red are going to have to run away here. But for now, they're going to run away to deal with this, though. So, you know, obviously panic time right now. And when you're panicked... It's really hard to make the proper decisions. But I think something that would have benefited Red so much here was an instant siege workshop. The petards is bold, right? It's a pretty crazy thing to do. And Red's actually going to get away with it uh, with the first one. But I think you need to go for a siege workshop. That way you have army and you also have rams. And then in blue, in your position, I can tell he's actually clicked with the castle onto that TC. You never want to do that. You just want to let the castle do its own thing because if there's no units there, it will automatically prioritize the building anyways. And then if a petard or any units get close, then you actually get value from murder holes. I think now he's clicked. He just realized what was happening. And you can see murder holes is helping a lot. Blue adds the elephant to add insult to injury here. And the elephant's actually really good, right? It's expensive. But it's 470 HP, so good luck killing that. And while the castle is weak, the castle is not weak enough. The castle still stands. Uh, blue hoping to repair this. Red hoping to escape. Red probably doesn't feel like there's any chance now. You could tell it was awkward for Red. These two petards, they decided not to lose their life. 
I can't say I blame them, and Red continues to panic. But at what point do you look at this and just think, I can't deal with this garbage? Uh, it would certainly be soon for me, because Red didn't expand. It'd be different if Red had TCs elsewhere, but this was it. The whole game plan was to fight through the middle, and the sneaky little dock on the side end of the transport was able to make the difference here. I swear, if I ever hear the town bell one more time, I'll lose my mind. <laughs> but that's Red's way of trying to save all the villagers. I just don't know if Red has enough here, right? We're going to have full upgrades in Castle Age. So, plus two armor and plus two attack. Oh, man, but the food eco is so bad. In fact, I think the only nine he has on food would be the nine fishing ships that are tra traveling the whole way across the world, it feels like, to get fish. The game ends, Red taps out, Ozzy the one wins it. And guys, I, I honestly feel like with the way the resources collected looked, if that castle didn't happen, I think Red ends up rebounding. Red would have Cavalier and Castle H, plus he'd have the unique unit, all of which is stronger than what the Persians can do. They'd be fighting through the middle, and this actually looks like a fairly decent spot for a castle for Red. I'm not sure if he could fit it, but I'm just imagining in a normal world where that castle never happens. I think this game does stay very interesting and is still a very good cast, right? But I think Red wins the fight in the middle, drops the castle here, and then Blue has problems. Great job from Blue to expand, though. Great job from Blue to use the map. And honestly, this definitely falls into the category of maybe you shouldn't try this strat. <laughs> because, you know, that castle could easily get denied at any point. It's not like this island was big and you were hiding it. No, it was on red screen. But sometimes you just have to do something crazy. Sometimes you just have to have fun. And uh, that Blue certainly had fun in this game. There's the resources collected. Again, Red did actually have more resources collected still in this entire game. But Blue with the better KD and Blue with the surprise tactic there was an impressive one. And when I saw this submitted in my Discord, I knew I needed to show it to you guys. I don't actually know which player submitted it, but I mean, come on. Just go ahead and guess which player submitted this. Do you think Red submitted it and said, hey, look how I got flexed on? Look at how I missed that castle next to my TCs? No, it was probably Ozzy. So Ozzy, thanks for the game. Thanks for being creative. And I'll see you all next time.